<clears throat> Good evening, everyone. I will wait for a few people to join the feed and then I will start for everybody to get the information complete and information accurate as we are in constant contact with our colleague that we have worked for and that we have worked with in Tapachula and in Guatemala, Carlos Mejia Lopez. <clears throat> Good evening, everybody. I'm Oscar Blue for Border Network News at America's Voice. This is a caravan update for everybody that is watching. As you guys already know, the caravan entered, they tried to enter forcibly and violently through our south door in Tapachula. They were stopped uh, by uh, the Marines and also the National Guard and also the municipal authorities in Tapachula, in our beautiful country of Mexico, the city of Ciudad Hidalgo, in the port of entry of Rodolfo Robles. Uh, the National Guard stopped them from entering radically and violently, and after throwing them uh, tear gas and uh, pepper spray, they calmed down and they understood that they had to enter peacefully, calmly, and documented it with a purpose. Uh, they were letting them in by the amounts of 20 and 15. Those are the amounts that they're letting them in. We just received videos and really important and viral videos uh, and videos that they were taking by Carlos Mejia Lopez and also by our another co another contact that we have in Chiapas through uh, our friend Beto Alfa Noticias. These videos, I will be, I will be posting them in our page so you guys can watch how they were trying to cross through the river Suchiate and how the National Guard was there. How it is a lie that is only twelve hundred people and it's more people. It is more than fifteen hundred. They. Uh, got together more people from Guatemala that they want to migrate and they're seeing that there's better possibilities now. A lot of people are saying if they're letting them through, what is going to happen? This is what is going to happen. And it is good and it is amazing what the authority Mexican authorities are doing right now. Uh, they are, as soon as they are right there waiting on the port of entry in Tapachula, they got a loudspeaker that says this. If you enter Mexico, you have to enter peacefully, documented, and with a purpose. Not because you're entering Mexico to ask for the political asylum means that you are going to get the asylum. And not because you're entering Mexico to ask for the asylum means that the United States is giving you the asylum. The United States has not given asylum to all of you. That is the recording they are putting on a loudspeaker around the whole River Suchiate in the two ports of entry that is the Rodolfo <coughs> Robles port of entry that is a bridge called Rodolfo Robles, this is the Suchiate one, and also from Talisman. They got a big speakers by the National Guard that they are saying that. If you are going to ask for asylum in Mexico, it's going to be peacefully documented and with a purpose. And also, if you don't know that they are going to give you the asylum in Mexico. And also, uh, don't be fooled. In the United States, they're not giving asylum to all of you. This is a good and great thing to do by the Mexican authorities. Why? Because they're informing them that they have to do uh, the correct procedure and the migrant procedure in respecting the laws of immigration to migrate or to ask for asylum in each border in each country. This is the correct way to uh, advise them and to tell them. Why? Because they're coming in masses 
of people in big amounts. But they're letting them in by 15 and 20 people right now. And all of those 15 and 20 people, they're letting them know that they are not going to leave Tapachula, people. That is another big announcement. That they are not going to let them get out of Tapachula. The National Guard is the most important thing. And the most important thing is that we, uh, we are putting inspection points for people to understand that there is a process for them to migrate. There is a process for them to migrate. And the process is this. The process is clear and the process is more transparent. The process is you need to cross to Tapachula, ask for the asylum in Mexico. After asking for the asylum in Mexico, you are going to be given a visa of transit. After you are being given the visa of transit, you can move to whatever part of the country. Those are five states that you can move only. That is the legal process how Mexico is accepting them. They're not going to be free to move to a border. They're going to try to keep them and push them to stay in Tapachula. They're not authorizing them to move out of the city of Tapachula. What does this mean? Two things. One good one and one bad one. The bad one is that if they are going to be doing this operation, there's going to be a riot or, there, or there's going to be a manifestation for them to move because of their necessities and their economic necessities. So, riots and manifestations and rallies are about to be start to happen again. As we saw that operation in October, where they tried a, a caravan of uh, people that they were waiting over there by Africa and also caravan by Haiti. They tried to uh, come irregularly through the city of Tapachula and they want it without no permits to be uh, walking and to be <clears throat> moving around in whatever part of our country. They can't do that. The only thing that, uh, the, the only thing that they can do is wait for their legal process, is to wait for their legal process and to wait for the proper documentation for them after that to be authorized to move out out of Tapachula. The bad thing is that they, as soon as these people start to understand that the migration situation is a process and they're not, by, and they're not getting their rights violated because the International Commission of Human Rights is advocating for them to move without permits. They need to respect laws and immigration in our constitution. So they are going to wait in Tapachula for their visas of transit. How long does a visa of transit last? Between four to six months right now. As a lot of fake documents are being given, a lot of fake documents are being made, birth certificates for children and also IDs for people to, uh, to go by as Mexican when they're not Mexican. All of these things, the National Guard already knows what is happening and what is going on with them. So they are going to be inspectioning documents, children, and also inspection points for them to not go around the jungle. So they are going to keep them in Tapachula. Yes, people, they're letting them in by the amounts of 15 and 20, but they are going to stay there in Tapachula as the president of the United States, Donald J. Trump, told the Mexican president that if they see insecurity in their borders and if they see the United States government sees that these caravans are hauling and these caravans are crossing illegally to their mountains, through their rivers and through their walls, <clears throat> the tariff is going to apply again. So this is why the government of Mexico said we are letting you in. That is OK. We got 4000 jobs for you over here. If Mexico has the ability to provide, I don't know what 
in what God's idea this president is thinking of Mexico that we have 4,000 jobs to give to other people when we have 60 million in poverty and 28 million in critical condition. But he's inviting all these people to, to understand that there's jobs over here in the last five states that they, the, of, uh, of our South Door border. So, uh, meanwhile, they don't get out of their perimeter. The United States is not going to apply the 5% tariff on automobile industry, avocados, and beer, alcohol. Meanwhile, they stay over there. The United States is going to keep an eye on these uh, on the authorities of Mexico and also keep an eye that their Mexico is doing their job from keeping them from crossing irregularly and illegally through Mexico and also through the United States. Meanwhile, Mexico is doing their job as they are doing right now, keeping them in their south door and keeping them in their in, keeping it in our country, unfortunately. If they're doing their job, the tariff will not apply. But if they start failing with the agreement and people start scattering around all over the country and all over the borders, the tariff is going to apply. This is why they sent 200 more officers of the National Guard and 200 more officers of the Mexican Customs to surround the River Suchiate and to, and to uh, <clears throat> control the massive entrance and the irregular entrance of these influx of migrants that is happening in our, in our South Door. Good evening to everybody. How's everybody doing? I'm Oscar Blue for Border Network News and America's Voice. We're giving you guys a current update as we just uh, got the uh, <clears throat> the news and also the uh, we got some evidence that I will upload some really phenomenal videos on how they were crossing through the river walking and the Mexican authorities, good. They were waiting for them on the other side of the river. Also, how they are lying to us and they're saying that the, the amount is 1,200 when it's not. It's more than 1,200, it's 1,500 and we have video and evidence of that. Also, video of a lot of children. The majority of this caravan are children. Now, 70%, uh, 60% of it is the majority are men and 20%, uh, 40% of them are uh, approximately between 40 and 50% are women and children. This caravan has a lot of children. That is a huge problem, people. It is a huge problem. Number one, why? The number one problem is because of the fake families and also the fake asylum seeking process that they are using. They're using minors to get the asylum in Mexico. And, all, and after that, they go to the International Commission of Human Rights and they ask for the asylum in the United States and they get through the loophole of the immigration process of the United States. It was amazing that I was hearing a video and the video that I was hearing of these migrants asking for the asylum, they know now the articles of the uh, of their human rights, they know how to explain their human rights, and they know that they be from them creating families and creating marriages they can go through. So this is a huge, huge problem, people. That in this caravan there's a lot of children. These children need to be inspection. These children need to be screened, and the parents need to be the parents of the children for them to be crossing uh, to another state in another state, and for them to be freely. Uh, asking for the political asylum. My God, what a way to risk lives, man. God's sake, really. If the majority of this, if a large part of the caravan are children, for God's sake, really. What are these people thinking? Where is our, man, United Nations, what the hell are you doing? What are you doing, Soros? You're destroying families and you're destroying lives of children. For God's sake, react, your evil demonic person. You're putting babies and children at risk. I'm seeing the caravan. It is amazing that you're putting all these people through rivers and deserts and changes of weather and risking their lives. Amazing. Amazing how this new world order and all these United Nations is getting supported by all the left and the political parties on the left and the radical activists. It is amazing. How they are supporting people risking their lives to cross to another country and to risk the lives of children 
not caring what all these children go through and making them think that Mexico is a third world secure country when it's not. It has more than 34,000 murders in one year, making it the second country most, most dangerous in the world with the most dangerous president in the first year of the history of Mexico. Unbelievable. And they are letting them migrate. That is the amazing thing. God bless our Marines. God bless our National Guard of Mexico. Viva Mexico. Well done. Well done to the uh, immigration officers that they are risking their lives also. We don't know if these people come in sick. We don't know if they have diseases. We don't know what kind of needs they have. And the Mexican authorities and the Mexican customs are risking their lives as thou out. It was hurting me to see them being pushed on our door when they supposed to come in peacefully, not pushing, not hitting each other, peacefully asking for the asylum. God sake, appreciate that Mexico is opening your doors. If you don't like Honduras, appreciate that Mexico is opening your doors. And there's a lot of speculations and declarations on Facebook pages when it hits you right there in the stomach when they say, we don't need Mexico. It's only a trampoline for us to get to the United States. It is amazing the level of disrespect to our flag, to our nation, to our constitution, and to our people. And our president is allowing that. It is allowing that. God bless our troops over there in the South Door, our National Guard. And also God bless our Mexican customs as they are trying to do their best, people. They are trying to do our best. Uh, to protect the country and to maintain them as the instructions have been given. They're going to maintain them in Tapachula. They're going to keep them there in Tapachula. They're not going to get out of Tapachula. They already have inspection points and operational uh, uh, officers that they are going to surround the city for them to not get out. Also, they're going to be inspectioning the buses and also truck drivers that might be Trafficking all these people or illegally putting them on the back of their trailer. Keep our troops in prayers over there, National Guard. Keep our immigration uh, officers in your, in your prayers as Mexican authorities are trying to do their best to maintain and to contain the caravan. We understand that a lot of people are suffering, but they're suffering all over the world. And Mexico is suffering also as we have. 60 million in poverty, 28 million in critical condition, and 68 million without medical care. First, that is our slogan. Always, your country should be first. But and to, for these left political parties and for these activists and instigators, the priority is not their country. The priority is to help everybody else in the world when we don't have the sustent. And also, we don't have the economic uh, <clears throat> support to maintain all these people. It is amazing, these demonic and global globalist packs of immigration. And also watch out for the, again, I will repeat it again, watch out for the global pact of education that is going to be happening on the 14th of May of 2020. Watch out for that as the United States is going to try to participate uh, and see if it is convenient for them to be on this global agenda of the Vatican and of the Pope, of the Pope. God bless everybody. How's everybody doing? Good evening. This is a Caribbean update for everybody that is watching. I want to say thank you to my colleague and partner, uh, Carlos Mejia Lopez, as he is working nonstop since three o'clock in the morning. Right now, he left the, the he left the scene and he told me everybody's calm on the other side of the bridge and they're letting them in by small amounts throughout the night. They're going to put them in specific places. And they are going to be inspectioning the rivers and keeping watch the river so they will not cross illegally. He has been working since 3 o'clock in the morning, uh, Tapachula time. And he just went to, uh, to take a little rest. God bless you, Carlos. Dios te bendiga, Carlos. I will put up his page. And uh, in our, in our, in our uh, platform, for you guys to follow him, his page was dropped. More than 30,000 followers he had on the ATN Noticias. That was his page. His page was dropped. Now I will put up his page again for you guys to follow him and follow all the updates and follow everything 
and videos that he is showing to every single one of you guys. God bless you all. I will be here for five minutes for, uh, for Q&A, questions and answers that you guys want to address to myself. God bless my partner, Conservative Anthony, as he's running for Congress in District 16 of El Paso. Also, God bless uh, Sandra Lee Witten as she is running for Congress in District 28 of Texas. Also, you can go to Jim Bemby's page and try to cooperate and help his uh, GoFundMe for him to fight against the open border mafia he, as he is being judged as, you know, <clears throat> as he is uh, was part of a uh, human act against migrants. Uh, go to Jim Bemby's page and donate to his uh, GoFundMe if you have, guys have time and you guys want to support for him to get a good lawyer and to fight against the open border mafia. God bless you all. You can cooperate also and you can donate to my uh, work. Right there is my PayPal on the bottom if people want to donate and contribute. Also, follow me at YouTube at Oscar Blue and Twitter at Oscar Blue Border Network News and also on Instagram as Oscar Blue. Questions and answers are right here for you guys. What five states are they going to? Uh, Cancun, Yucatan, Tabasco, Oaxaca, Chiapas. Five states. AMLO is an imposter. <sighs> yes. Q&A, people. Somebody wants to ask a question, I'm right here for you guys. Before I go. And also, I will be coming live if some emergency or something comes out. I will keep you guys posted. And I will uh, immediately tell you guys if something of emergency comes out of the caravan. When they will be in TJ. Uh, specifically, I don't know if they are going to come to Tijuana. We have over here a shelter, federal funded, that for capacity of three to 5,000 people. I don't know if they're going to arrive to Tijuana. I saw some posts that a lot of them are saying that they are coming to Tijuana. But along the way, they see that it's really easy to cross through cities like El Paso to from Juarez, uh, cities like uh, Coahuila, uh, parts like in, in Nuevo León, in Tamaulipas, in uh, Nuevo Laredo, and all these places. They are really easy because they don't have no wall. And it's really, you know, they don't have that much of a border patrol. So they plan to stay on these places. And when they hit Tijuana, they see an enormous wall and they understand that they made a mistake. So a lot of them already have... They, uh, their plans to go through somewhere. Donna, Donna Crook, uh, Crock says, are they going to go? Are they, are they, are they still going ahead with the 5,000 occupancy shelter? I just mentioned that. Why is Amlo an imposter? Don't you, uh, sit, explain why. Why is Amlo an imposter? You want me to explain why Amlo for me is a traitor to our constitution and to our country? Do you want me to explain that? And if you want me to explain that, I will just tell you something. That practically, you can understand as an American citizen, if you are an American citizen, Esteban Plasencia, but if you're not an American citizen and you're a Mexican citizen, and then you live in Mexico, you would understand that if you are an AMLO follower or not, I will, I will, I will tell you this. Let's leave these arguments alone and let's not touch this defense arguments because of the last presidencies, because the country is like this, because of the past governments, leave him alone. He has one year only as president. And also, this is all the fault of the past governments. Leaving those arguments on the side, I will tell you why AMLO is an imposter, un impostor, un inepto y un traidor and a traitor to our nation. We have more than 60 million in poverty, 68 million without medical care, and 28 million without in, in, in critical condition. We are number two in killings of women in all Latin America, number three in child trafficking in the world. As I said millions of times, we got four cities on the top five for violence and delinquency in the world, five in the top 10 and 15 on the top 50. We have in the first year AMLO, 0% increase on the economy in our country. Also, we are the number four in the world with uh, borders that they are next to another country. 
of violence and delinquency next to Afghanistan, Iraq, North Korea, Mexico, and Syria. Amazingly, we are number two on clandestine, uh, clandestine bearings of people. We are number one in cartel and narco activity in the world. This is a problem that has been existing for you know the longest of time in our country. But I remember that President AMLO, before he was president, he told everybody in our country, he told every single paisano and every single citizen of Mexico, Mexicans are a priority. We will end the poverty in our country. We will provide for jobs. We will help the Mexican citizens. First is our culture. First is our farmers. First is our country. And he has betrayed us. He has betrayed that. He, we are not a priority. He is providing help for Central America and not for our, for our citizens. He is not helping the Mexican poor people. He's not helping the Mexican poor women. And also, the most important thing for you, more than 34,000 murders in the first year of AMLO, making him the most insecure president in the first year on this presidency in the history of Mexico after the revolution. Imagine that. So with that and all a lot of statements that I can give you, I can tell you that our president, more than a socialist and more than a radical leftist, he is a traitor to our constitution and to our country not like the president of the United States of America, that he is for his country, that he is for his citizens, that he is for his own land and for defense, his constitution, the second amendment and the fifth amendment and the first amendment. Our president doesn't defend our constitution. Our president doesn't defend the article 33 of the constitution. Our president doesn't defend the article 10 of the constitution. Our president doesn't defend and doesn't obey the Article 81 of our Constitution. Our president is disrespecting Article 6 and 7 of our Constitution. And our president obviously disrespects Article 11 of our Constitution. So if you want to tell me why AMLO is an imposter, I can give you a lot of the reasons. But the only reason that and the most important one that I can tell you is that his country is not first. His people are not first. And his poverty of his country and his own Mexican people are not in his priority. That word priority doesn't and it does not exist on his vocabulary and on his birth certificate and it has never existed on his mind and education. Priority doesn't exist. So he is on my mind and my heart an imposter. He is a traitor to our country and he's a traitor to our Mexican people because he said that Mexican people were and they were going to be first and they are not. Questions? Questions, people. Are these people and children reported by by ill physically? I don't understand your question, but uh, if you're referring to if these children are checked uh, physically, they are trying to keep a medical department right there on the south door in Tapachula. Pueblos Sin Fronteras are there going to investigate them. Apparently, the government of the United States of America has been investigating Pueblos Sin Fronteras for our longest of time as a nonprofit organization and also being accused of trafficking and human smuggling. We don't know. We don't know if uh, Pueblos Sin Fronteras is being investigated, but the speculation is that they are. Victor Hernandez Firmes de Firmes Tijuas, Oldies, bendiciones, saludos. Saludos, carnal. Saludos y a huevo. Viva Tijuana y viva México, mi hermano. Primero Tijuana y primero México. Guatemala is not doing anything. Ah, I can tell you that Guatemala uh, is a third world secure country and they are not going to do anything. The only thing that Guatemala can do is let them through so Mexico can take care of them. So Guatemala is not capable and doesn't have the capacity to fix the problem. Guatemala is just another trampoline for people to migrate. This is amazing, people. For last, as last comment, this is amazing. This is amazing that nobody is blaming and nobody is investigating the president of Honduras, Juan Orlando Hernandez. This is amazing that the president of Honduras hasn't been arrested for this on human acts on his own country. 
This is amazing that the corruption of Honduras has not uh, a red dot for the United Nations. If they are helping these people, why don't you help them in their own country to create jobs, to create peace, and to find also justice for every single one of them? Why are you making them migrate every single time, putting them through weather, through weather changes, through all sicknesses, through cartels, to kidnappings, to killings, to all these children suffering? It is amazing all this corruption and this migration that is fabricated to destable the economy of every country and also to undermine the laws of every country like the United States of America. Amazing that the president of Honduras hasn't been arrested and hasn't been charged for treason under, the, under their constitution of Honduras and under the constitution and under the rights of every citizen of Honduras. That they need to fight for their laws. They need to fight for their country. They need to fight for their justice. And they need to fight for their country to be great like Mexico is trying to do that. God bless everybody that is watching. I will keep you posted for an update later on if something comes up. God bless everybody in my country of Mexico and the National Guard troops. And also God bless my Mexican customs as they are trying to do their best, people, to protect our country and to follow instructions. <clears throat> God bless our country and God bless the United States of America. We will see you to the next time. Stay safe and always remember peace and love, everybody, because always your country is first.